Welcome back, dear viewers. You're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV International and from dear viewers, Monaro Convention Center, where the book fair, the International Cairo Book Fair in its 55th edition is taking place, dear viewers. We have a very uh, exclusive guest. The days of turning pages, straining the eyes with the small letters and making space on the bookshelf. Every time one fan sees a new book, are long gone. It is the age of uh, turning, zooming in and out, and saving ebooks you love on the cloud. The dear viewers reading and listening devices and mobile applications across platforms to support our busy lifestyles has driven the growth of the digital book industry thus far. For. To know more about this issue, which is very important to you nowadays, we're honored to host our distinguished guest, Professor of Computer Science at New York University, Dr. Mohammed Zahran. And Dr. Mohammed, it's a pleasure, of course, to have him with us in this very tight time. Uh, and we caught him and we got him. It's a pleasure, sir. A wonderful day and it's a pleasure to have you with us. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks a lot. Um, sir, what are the pros that such platforms provide, such as, of course, the e-books, uh, saving e-books you love on the cloud, a zoom in and out, and, of course, the, uh, sir, breathing and listening devices and mobile applications across platforms to support our busy lifestyles, which has, of course, driven the growth of the digital book industry uh, so far. Okay, well, the e-books have a lot of pros, and unfortunately, with any technology, they have some cons. The e-books are, first, you can carry a lot of books with you on your cell phone or on your tablet, and this is a very good thing because you will have a lot of varieties in your busy lifestyle, so you can read a book uh, when you are eating your breakfast, you can eat a different book uh, when you are driving, or listen to a book when you are driving. You can also highlight part of the books, get you the highlights alone, separated from the book, you can put notes and all of that stuff. And these platforms also can suggest new books for you. And this is a very good thing because it will learn with time your taste of the books, what type of books you like to read and so on. So they can give very good suggestions. The cons of something like this is that people from my generations and before they prefer to read paper books despite you know newspapers yeah exactly i mean the internet happens when i was doing you know my, my master's degree not even my you know my my undergrads so i still like the paper books despite that they take a lot of space uh, and another thing is that they found that the ebooks have some negative uh, effect on the attention span because you will have the tendency to check few pages of a book and then you switch to another book to check this and maybe back to the first book so your attention span will be affected. And uh, fortunately, my generations and the previous one, we, we escaped with our attention span, but for the new generations, this is not really uh, a thing that they have to let go. I mean, they have to at least try to read slowly and so on, but for sure, this is a future. The new generations no longer, you know, use a lot of papers and, and uh, you know, pen and pencils and all of that stuff. So we are moving to the E, anything. Sir, um, do you think uh, printed books will soon be replaced by electronic books? Okay, my wish, the e-book sales did not surpass the paper book sales except during the COVID because people cannot go to, but now it's back, the paper book are back. I think because it's still, the older generations are still buying, the younger generations are not, but eventually, yes, I believe that uh, the e-book sales will surpass the paper book but the paper books will never disappear because sometimes there are some precious books that you prefer to have them in paper in your library uh, but the ebooks will be for the dated or, or maybe for the books that you read once and then get rid of and, and so on so yes they will the ebooks is the future but the paperback will stay with us okay um so um to avoid crowds at the book fair reservations will be online with the link to be posted on the official Facebook page of the, of course, um, uh, CIBF or the um, uh, the page of the of the book fair. Your say or your or how do you think? It well, getting the tickets online is of course is a very good thing, um, but the crowd is not really only for getting the tickets. The crowd is scanning this QR code to get the people in. 
So I believe that somewhere in the near future, even the QR code will not really the, be the thing. It will be just, you know, maybe Bluetooth or something that you can just pass by and it will let you go or it will beep if you have an old ticket. But scanning a QR code one by one, this is still a crowd. You remove the crowd from one place and put it in another. Uh, every year we'll see different, sir, and we'll go better, inshallah. In a significant move, uh, sir, to advance digital infrastructure, Egypt launches 5G services. What is the importance of moving to 5G networks? What is the difference between 5G and 4G? Okay, the main difference is the speed. And the speed is really a huge difference that we need because now a lot of platforms move to the cloud. And in order to use many of these things we need high speed i mean we can, now you need the very high definition videos the new generations requires videos and all of that stuff and they require actually the new generation now will not be happy if they see even a 4k they need even a higher so 5g is the way to go uh, it's much faster than 4g and in the you know in the digitization life you will do everything with your mobile phone so with your mobile phone you must have a fast and the reliable network. So 5G speed is nice, but we hope it will also be reliable. Okay, what technical preparations do 5G networks need, sir? Okay, well, it requires a lot of antennas because uh, the, the thing is, uh, the range is a little bit uh, shorter than the traditional 4G, so you need way more antennas and infrastructure scattered around in order to have a high coverage. Uh, which is, I think, it's not a big deal given the benefits we'll get from a 5G thing. Oh, I, I, so, I can you're, so you're against the 5G, no, uh, I mean, uh, but you don't see it's going to make a concrete difference between the 4G and the 5G? It will make if we uh, design applications that requires high definitions and, and all of that stuff, videos, and we need reliable communication and all of that stuff. But if you have only text-based and you just need to put a password uh, and username and just read and stuff, you will not see any difference between 4G and 5G. But if you need high definition videos, you need to make uh, augmented reality, uh, mixed reality and all of these things, you cannot do it with a 4G. You need a 5G. The communications networks ha network has developed very significantly in the past few years. What are the most important results of this development? Well, the whole thing is it gives the software developers a lot of freedom to design applications that do not worry about slow speed. It may increase a lot uh, online learning, online teaching, which is very much needed uh, in a very crowded uh, country like ours because now people can take some classes online, they can interact uh, without the fear that you know you will see all of this circle going on because of the speed and all of that stuff. So certainly we need it and also it's not only for, for uh, persons, it's also for governments because the government needs to be always connected and with very high speed because digitization means all the information is in digital forms in big machines interconnected together. So basically your information may be scattered around. If you don't have a lot of communication or very reliable and, and high speed communications, some of the services may not work. So we certainly need these advances, and I expect that these advances will continue even beyond 5G. I have read some articles who are already talking about 6G. So. Uh, what are the most important features of digital development in Egypt in 2023? is that we have put a lot of material now in digital forms uh, from the very old now you can get any papers that you want from 40 or 50 years back this digitization by itself is a very big leap forward adding ai and high performance computing will continue these services that e-governments can give one of the most important steps in the digital transformation is moving the government headquarters to the new administrative capital. What does this transition provide? Well, when you move to a new place and a newly designed place, not, not a new place, this means the infrastructure has been designed with communication and high performance computings in mind. Because if you move to an old established like downtown or something, the infrastructure regarding digitization, communication is an afterthought because these, these buildings are old. So when you move in new, to a new place that has been designed with these things in mind, you will get much better resources when it comes to 
digital life in general. So Egypt is moving towards a four generation cities or smart cities. What are the specifications of these cities? All right, smart cities requires first very high bandwidth communications that is like fast communication and then it has some intelligence in its, re in its reactions. For example, think about the traffic lights. The traffic lights in traditional cities are fixed. The light will be red for a few seconds and then it will become green. In smart cities, it will have intelligence. If there are no traffic, it will be green. If there are a lot of traffic, it will try to move the cars in a way to uh, accommodate these uh, things. It also has some intelligence, which means it requires Internet of Things and in artificial intelligence um, to uh, manage the power and electricity, to, uh, to manage the bandwidth of networking and so on. So this means that the infrastructure manages itself to give better services to people, which requires AI, it requires communication, it requires high performance computing and digitization, of course. Sir, what is the importance of the complete transformation of e-government? Well, it requires that hopefully you will be able to do everything from your phone or your tablet without the need to go to a specific place to do some works and get a lot of signatures and stamps and all of that stuff, hopefully. Sir, um, uh, finally, electronic transactions save time, effort, money. Uh, but they may stop suddenly. What are the alternative plans when electronic systems uh, stop? Okay, well, first, when an electronic system stops, which we, we like to call it a system where something like this usually happens for many reasons. So we need to deal with each one separately. For example, it may that it may result because a lot of people need to do the same service at the same time. So think about a highway that has two lanes and you have hundreds of cars who wants to give. So in that case, the system will be very slow to the extent that you think it's down. So something like this we can deal with by giving people timing. For example, you want to do a service, a specific service, you will get, okay, you will come that day at that time. So in that case, you will avoid a lot of people coming at the same time. Another thing has to do with the reliability of the machines itself. If the machine is down, of course, the whole system will not work. So in that case, usually people have more machines than needed so that the system can intelligently switch from one machine to the other so that the service is not interrupted. Something like, like this. Professor of Computer Science at the University of the New York University, uh, Dr. Mohammed Zahran. It's our utmost pleasure to have you with us today, uh, coincidentally, at the Cairo International Book Fair in its 55th edition. It was our utmost pleasure. Thank you very much for your informative knowledge. It was our utmost pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for inviting me and thanks for uh, this great opportunity. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Dear viewers, you're still watching Nile Cruise on Nile TV International and uh, on a very special event, on a very special day from the Cairo International Book Fair on its 55th edition. We bring you today's episode of Nile Cruise. Stay tuned. I'll be back again.